What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the YU-410 light freighter. Like most of the light freighters found across the galaxy, it was produced by Corellian Engineering Corporation. It marked the start of a new line called the YU series, which was meant to be a larger and more powerful option to the best-selling YV and YT lines. At 200,000 credits, it was exactly twice the cost of the YT-1300 and 70 grand more than the YT-2400. CEC actually made this ship as a direct response to the YT-1300's success, wanting to offer a cargo hauler with more than twice the capacity, up to 250 metric tons from 100. That's an increase of 184 dubaks. The ship was marketed towards completely legitimate shipping companies that would be hauling more cargo for longer distances, and who wouldn't be looking for aftermarket weapons upgrades. That is why it came stock with four double laser cannons, one turret on the dorsal, and one on the ventral side, and then these two forward-facing ones as well. With powerful shields and a thick hull, it was the kind of ship a company could just buy stock and not have to worry about anything. But this also meant that it lacked the modular features of the YT series and didn't easily support modification. CEC quickly found out that those were the two features that made their other ships so popular, and that when a ship doesn't catch on with smugglers and spacers, it doesn't sell very well. Said to be twice the height of the 1300, it would be around 16 meters or 55 feet tall, making it half the height of the CR-90. At 44 meters or 144 feet long, it was about three huts longer than the Falcon, and one-third the CR-90. If it were here on Earth, it would be about two-thirds of the dimensions of a Boeing 747, and around five stories tall. This greatly increased profile made it unwieldy in many atmospheres, and just too difficult to work through an asteroid field. Again, just another way CEC wasn't thinking about the smugglers and difficult contract-fulfilling folk that bought most of their products. The extra cargo room was nice, but often unnecessarily large for most of the self-employed spacers, who weren't even filling up the YT-1300s to the brim to begin with. These engines required more fuel, which was also true for running those extra weapons. So just the maintenance was expensive, but those were also weapons that most spacers could have got for a whole lot cheaper at Outer Rim mod shops, instead of paying for the ones supplied by the dealer. And it wasn't like it made up for it in speed. Its top atmospheric speed was only 800 kilometers per hour, or 497 miles per hour, which is slower than the Falcon, but is tied with the 2400. Its Class II hyperdrive was average for this type of ship, but all in all, there just wasn't a lot here to attract most of CEC's customer base. But the YU-410 wasn't a total flop. The set-it-and-forget-it nature of this ship was appealing to some of the mid-sized shipping companies out there, and those extra credits did go towards some nicer interiors. Apparently, many came with the state-of-the-art entertainment room, which was intended to give the four-man crew some distraction on longer journeys. And though not modular, creativity did prevail in a few of these ships, with merchants on some worlds turning them into traveling stores, and some mercenaries turning these voluminous interiors into luxury living quarters and a mobile base of operations. But even with that being said, you would usually only see these operating in the core. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. It was first introduced in Legacy of Starships, but also appeared in Honor Among Thieves and Galaxy at War. And as of yet, it has not been reintroduced into new canon material. But what do you think of this ship? Personally, I love the lore on it, as it's fun to just imagine some executives at CEC realizing that the explosion of success with the YT-1300 was really the result of criminal businesses across the galaxy. Like the companies that made dime bags and ski masks, seeing that their products weren't used to protect coins and keep your face warm. I also like its design, even if it wasn't that big of a hit. But definitely let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. But that's it for the YU-410 light freighter. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, the customer is always right, even when they're criminals. And the Force will be with you, always.